Hey guys, and in this psychology video, we're going to discuss the elaboration likelihood model. Now, there's a couple of things I want to say before I start this video. Number one is the thing I always say in these videos, in that I know not all of you are interested in psychology videos, and a lot of you subscribe just for the tech videos. I appreciate that, and I intend to do more tech videos in the future, and I'm, I, I, I'm actually just about to shoot a another video just for just when I get done from this video about um in, integrating some C CSV stuff into Drupal, some web design tutorials. So um got that to look forward to but I'm doing these psychology videos just because it's my, my new sort of interest at the moment and I, and I think anyone can benefit from having an understanding of psychology so that's why I'm doing these videos. I also want to say that when I've done these videos in the past it's been for studies and um, or it's been about topics that are on the OCR A levels psychology specification because that's the specification I'm doing at my college and um, while I've been on this holiday though I've started to um, sort of branch out into other areas of psychology that interest me in doing more research. So I've already done I've already done one video like that. The um about anorexia nervosa. That's not on the um A level specification either, but I've done a video on there out of interest. Now I've been looking at some some of Dittmar's work on body image which is to come in the future but I don't know whether you'll be seeing that video on um, that video on anorexia nervosa first or this video. So just to say, I'm still going to be doing videos covering studies you need for the A level specification, but um, I'm also going to be branching out, branching out, and do, doing some other videos. So with that said, let's get into the and um, meet what we're to know about the 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 elaboration likelihood model. So it, it's it's a model it's a model of persuasion in consumer psychology because that's what we're researching at the moment. Consumer psychology is of great interest to me. And just on a a side note, I've actually got um the book on consumer psychology by. Um, Catherine, Catherine B, Catherine V. Jansen Boyd. It's a, it's a great book. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it skims over quite a few issues, but it, it gives you quite a broad, nice introduction to, um, consumer psychology. But with that said, let, let's, let's get into it. So, the elaboration likelihood model is a, a theory of persuasion, a, a cognitive theory of why why we listen to our advertising messages because it's it's clear that even though a lot of people don't think they're persuaded by uh, um advertising messages in reality they are without without realizing it and um, so the the the, the elaboration line cloud model goes some way towards explaining that process however i think um as the name would suggest, what the elaboration likelihood model is about is about explaining how likely it is we're, we're going to elaborate on, on some information we receive on in an advertising message. But what's what, what's elaboration, and more particularly, why is it important? Just just for some background information. So, elaboration is a a key a key concept in memory and it's um, really about how you get how you get information to stay in your long term memory because obviously that's what that's what advisors want advertisers and marketers want they want you to um, buy their product when you walk into a store but they also want you to remember advertising messages to tell your friends, discuss it with your friends. So, um, the concept of elaboration in general is important in consumer psychology 
So, um, most simply, the, uh, the idea of elaboration is just the, the more you think about some information, the more likely you are to remember it. You don't have, you don't have to be Einstein to realise that. But, but there, are, there have been quite a few empirical studies, such as the work of Craig and Tolving, um, Tolving, 1975, which have sh have shown that it, it, even even in laboratory settings, the more you the 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 more you th think about the meaning of what you're trying to remember, the more likely you are to remember it. So the elaboration likelihood model is all about ex explaining what makes what makes people elaborate because if we can if if we can get them to elaborate then we're more likely to they're more likely to remember our advertising message but we need to understand why they elaborate. So uh, um the the story we're gonna talk about is Petty and Kakiopia Kakiopo nineteen eighty six A. They did some in, Empirical research in 1996, 1986 B, but we're going to talk about the theoretical model I proposed in 1986 A because I I think that's the um that is the most value for what we're talking about today. So um before we talk about the model itself, let's just discuss some background. One of the one of the really early theories of persuasion, a sort of mid 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 to late fifties, was the was the Yale theory of persuasion, and that was the first cognitive model of why. So again, c cognition meaning beha behavior is controlled by thought processes, not. Uh, so it's the com the computer analogy of explaining human behavior. We have one thought. We we process that and then we go on to the next four. And um, so the first um, cognitive model of persuasion was 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 the Yale model, and unsurprisingly developed at Yale, at Yale University in the U.S. Um, and you'll see a lot of similarities, if you know anything about that, to what we're going to talk about today. But it's it's. This is a more modern theory and more sort of applicable to specifically um, to con consumer psychology. So, uh, um, the, the models the models suggest that we either take a central route to persuasion or we take a peripheral route to persuasion because e even if a lot of, a lot of the time. Even if we don't think we process an advertising message, we actually do. So um, this model accounts for that by having the peripheral route to persuasion. But advertisers want us to t take the central route. So what 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 is the central route? Well, uh, um, when we first um, receive an adver advertising message, we um, again it. The idea is this is a cognitive c conscious process. So when we first receive the advertising message, we um, first decide decide whether we're motivated to elaborate. And the factors that it um, includes in motivation to elaborate are things like if we have um, if it if we perceive it to be relevant to us, if we have response responsibility for the outcome, or um, if it's we perceive it to be important, if if we do we do decide that we have motiva motivation, we, we then go on with with the same three factors to decide whether we have the ability to elaborate. And this is the this is this this, this is the central route now. And um, if we decide we don't have the motivation to elaborate, then then we go on. To, we go on to the peripheral route, which, like I was saying, is the route that advertisers don't really want us to take because the uh, it's been shown that it was shown by 
Pedin Kakio Kakiopo nineteen eighty six B that they the peripheral roots much more sort of um fl fluid and you can you can predict you can predict the behaviour that you want far less and it's far less easy to predict behaviour from people that have been uh, persuaded using a peripheral route. But let's get back to the central route. So the the second one that I was just talking about is first is motivating that's common to both of them. Second is ability. So you 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 just just uh, uh, factors that come in here are things like things like distractions them and whether you have the mental the mental capacity to elaborate and to elaborate and factors like that. If you do have the um if you have the motivation and you have the ability, so you've gone the you've gone down the central route, and uh, you then de de deeply process and deeply consider the message, and uh, and it's 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 much more like I was saying the the other, the, the, the 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 central route is much more sort of definite, and you're much more much more confident in your conclude about the Amtrak message because because you, you see a reason to consider it so you're much more likely to elaborate so so therefore it's much more likely to um go into your long term memory and you're much more likely to give the behavioural response that the advertiser wants. And um, let's talk about the peripheral route if this is what happens if if we decide that we don't have the motivation or we don't have the ability. This is what happens with a lot of advertising messages. But this tries to tries to explain why why we um we're still persuaded by things even if, if we think they irritate us. So taking the peripheral route rather than rather than us assessing the argument ourselves, we um Take a look at things like the source attractiveness. Who, who, who's saying it? Are they an expert? Is there a reason why I should trust this source? We also uh, t take a look at uh, the, the the number of arguments, the um, ex expertise of the person, and and the the, cre the credibility, previous experiences. So, uh, um, we. On the peripheral route, it's not really that we we want to uh, be persuaded. We have a personal investment in being persuaded. We we on the peripheral route, we j we just we just decide to be persuaded based on what 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 other people or other other factors that come into um play. We don't we don't really think about that. So we're much less likely to um, be persuaded and have it in our long term memory so this really builds on the work of um, Craig and Tobin 1975 and like I was saying it also builds on the uh, work of the Yale persuasion theory that has, uh, essentially said there, there are a range of factors that are involved in persuasion, things like the source, the source attractiveness, motivation, and things like that. But this, this broke it down into two separate routes. And um, so, so, so really, the 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 peripheral route is much less constant, and the central route is much more sort of fixed. And if you take the central route, you're much more likely to adopt the behaviour. Um, so, so that's that's the basics, basic basis of the elaboration likelihood model. Uh, Petting Kakiopo, nineteen eighty six A. Um, let, let let's talk about some evaluation issues. Although although in the peripheral route, it does take into account 
a range of source factors. You could still argue that this this theory is a bit, a bit reductionist because um, it's impossible really to take a holistic approach to this and take into account every single factor that could uh, um, that could be involved in why someone's persuaded. The fact, the fact, the fact that it's a cognitive model is a, a, also a little bit reductionist because it um it just basically assumes that people are trapped inside their own head and it, it doesn't take into account um social factors just just one person's thought process but in advertising and purchasing behavior a lot of the time. Social factors are important, so um, re re reductionism might might be an issue here. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. That was that was the elaboration I could model. Petty and Cacopia, Petty and Caco, Cacopo, 1986A. I always get that name wrong. Petty and Cacopia. Petty and Cat Petty and Kaki Opo There we go. Petty and Kaki Opo nineteen eighty six A elaboration icon model. Thanks for watching this video guys. We'll um discuss it down comment. More more psychology videos coming soon, more tech videos coming soon. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.